The dogs in the contaminated area around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant are now genetically different from all other dogs in the world. No kidding, you can learn everything about these nuclear dogs in this video, so be sure to stay tuned until the end, and if you like it, then I would appreciate a treat, a thumbs up, and a comment, because that helps us get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome. On April 26, 1986, at 123, changed the lives of many people. After a nuclear disaster, over 120,000 people were evacuated from the area around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and the nearby city of Pripyat. The consequences were also felt in the rest of Europe. I know that I also have many older viewers here, so I would be interested to know who of you was aware of this at the time. And above all, were you not allowed to go outside for a while? Was eating vegetables considered dangerous? Feel free to share your personal experiences in the comments. If you were already born at the time, I'm really very interested to hear about them. An aspect that hardly anyone has on their radar. The thousands of people evacuated back then naturally also had many dogs, and a large number of these dogs were left there in the Russian emergency at the time. Now, one would assume that these abandoned domestic dogs would not have lasted long near a damaged nuclear power plant with immense radiation exposure. Surprisingly, Many have survived, multiplied, and today there exists a relatively large dog population in the area around Chernobyl. And they are doing so well, they really shine. Okay, that joke was mean. These dogs are very mysterious. Because although it is very likely that they are pets of the evacuees, there are also people who consider that unlikely. For the Soviet forces actually exterminated all abandoned pets in the first days after the nuclear disaster, to prevent them from escaping the nuclear power plant and spreading radioactive contamination. Wherever they come from, the dogs are now there. And for scientists, it is, of course, extremely interesting to take a closer look at these Chernobyl dogs. How do they manage to withstand the still high radiation levels? What has changed in their bodies as a result? Thanks to a new study, we now know exactly that, and the result is truly spectacular. The local dog population is genetically different from all other dogs in the world. Sounds almost like the plot of an apocalyptic horror series. Nuclear irradiated dogs change their genetic makeup and then take over the world. It probably won't be that drastic, but the research findings are still significant. But the research results are still quite something. The researchers spent two years collecting DNA samples from stray animals and were able to examine a total of 302 dogs living within the power plant itself and within 15 to 45 kilometers of the disaster site. I find it super fascinating that there are actually dog families living in the power plant building. This is also how the involved geneticist Alan Ostrander sees it, who says, The most remarkable thing about the study is that we can identify populations of dogs that live in the shadow of the reactor, and we can identify these dogs by their DNA profile. The thought of families living near spent fuel rods is incredible and speaks to the resilience of dogs as a species. Overall, the new investigation found that this population has 15 complex family structures that are unique compared to other dogs. So the Chernobyl dogs can be clearly identified by their DNA and distinguished from other dog populations. And according to the researchers, this is due to the ionizing radiation that these dogs have been exposed to for generations. During the 1986 accident, the deadly radioactive isotope cesium-137 was released in immense concentrations near the power plant, so it is not surprising that this has affected the dogs over the generations. But how exactly can radiation alter DNA? When radiation directly interacts with DNA, it can change the structure of the DNA double helix by breaking the bonds between the nucleotides that make up the DNA. When radiation interacts with chromosomes contained in the DNA, it can even cause chromosome breaks and radiation increases the overall rate of mutation. Mutations are changes in the DNA sequence that make up an organism's genetic material. When a mutation occurs in a gene, it can lead to altered protein synthesis, which in turn can lead to changes in the function and characteristics of the organism. Mutations do not always have to be something bad. They actually play a significant role in evolutionary biology. You should always think about this when you drink a delicious and healthy glass of milk. By the way, this video is not sponsored by the dairy industry, unfortunately. Lactose tolerance is a genetic mutation. Our ancestors were all lactose intolerant. Only a mutation allowed our ancestors to digest milk sugar, which was, of course, an immense survival advantage at the time, as it ensured survival through an increased food supply, and thus lactose tolerance evolved quite effectively. 
Which mutations the Chernobyl dogs may have developed, and whether any are beneficial, will now be clarified by further tests. It is clear that the mutation rate must be significantly increased due to radiation exposure, and that the successful thriving of this dog population at least suggests that they have adapted to the conditions through mutations. As Dr. Ian Malcolm said in Jurassic Park, life finds a way. I want to emphasize again that mutations and evolution in general do not follow a plan. I still remember how my biology teacher, Ms. Hoffmans, always drummed this into me back then. My grades were still bad, though. There are certainly a lot of Chernobyl dogs that died young and painfully because of bad mutations. And just because they died, they couldn't reproduce and pass on the bad mutations. Dogs that were particularly well adapted to radiation exposure, either through beneficial mutations or simply through better physical condition, they were able to reproduce and thus a particularly radiation-resistant population of atomic dogs developed over generations. Just as giraffes did not develop long necks because they found it practical to reach the leaves, but rather because the ancestral giraffes with slightly longer necks had access to more food and could therefore focus on more pleasant things like reproduction instead of starving. Ah, Mrs. Hoffman would surely give me a four for this video. What kind of mutation could help the dogs, for example? The researchers think that they may have experienced genetic changes that improve their ability to repair DNA damage, which is a super important factor in dealing with radiation damage. And this research could then also be important for people who live in areas with high radiation exposure or in space travel, because in space, the radiation exposure is also very high. Elaine Ostrander says, we can learn so much from these animals. This is a unique opportunity to see what happens when generations of large mammals live in a hostile environment. The whole thing is also super interesting regarding a scientific theory called radiation hormesis, according to which low levels of radiation exposure can even be beneficial to health. Low doses of ionizing radiation below the threshold for acute damage can stimulate the immune system and enhance DNA repair processes. Some studies have shown that low doses of radiation can reduce the risk of certain cancers and have positive effects on the immune system and metabolism. In another study with dogs, it was found that the dog's life expectancy increased significantly when they were exposed to low levels of radiation throughout their lives. I know this sounds incredible and contradicts pretty much everything else you hear, but the body of research is relatively clear. I have linked a lot of sources on radiation hormesis in the show notes below so that I don't get a shitstorm. Of course, not only the dairy lobby did not sponsor this video, but the nuclear lobby isn't paying me a cent either. Unfortunately, some lobby must pay me money now, damn it. The dogs are surviving there, possibly thanks to advantageous genetic mutations and even slightly positive effects of radiation hormesis. This certainly does not mean that the dogs there are doing well, especially since the war in Ukraine has been raging. There are hardly any tourists in Chernobyl. That's right, you can book tours there. Fewer tourists means less food, as fewer supplies are brought on site for the dogs. The research team that conducted the DNA study with the dogs is therefore working with the Clean Futures dogs, which is trying to help the Chernobyl dogs through donations. You can find the link to the Clean Futures dogs in the video description below. Now let's move on to a very similar topic. There is another creature that thrives in Chernobyl, and that's a black fungus that eats radiation. NASA is already planning to use this fungus for space travel. I'm not crazy. It's really true. You can learn everything about this atomic mushroom in the video displayed. Be sure to check it out. If you want to support my work, then treat yourself to real meteorites and the shirts from the videos in the space shop. I'm now heading to my reactor to treat myself to my daily cell rejuvenating dose of radiation. See you in the next video. Take care, everyone.